All right, so let's do another comic book crossover review with TMNT Power Rangers. Yep, I am finally getting to it. Um, it actually came in today from a good friend of mine, Chris, Mount Vernon Kid. Know you're watching. Thanks, brother. Um, he also sent me some other comics. Um, I don't know if I'll do like a whole run through because I'm still waiting for one, and I'm, pro I'm probably going to burn through all of these. Uh, very well, probably not soon because they are big books. But two of them are Christopher Priest books, being Captain America and the Falcon. The other being the first volume of Black Pan of Christopher Priest's Black Panther run, as well as Dynamite's comic adaptation of Dracula, straight from the book. But yeah, this was one of the comics he sent me, and yeah, it was actually kind of funny because I said, "Hey, what was that crossover you were going to send me?" And he w he likes to tease and not say what it is. Um, and he says it's an IDW crossover with Boom, and then I was like, "Oh." And to which I responded with, well, I'm glad I didn't buy it at the comic shop the other day. It's where I got the Archie Batman 66 crossover. So I made a good, uh, so I made a good deal. <laughs> um, I made a good call there. I made a good call. So we're going to review probably one of the biggest crossovers that everyone was talking about. Like this was the big one um, for a lot of people because, yeah, we've technically had, this is technically the second Batman, uh, excuse me, uh, TMNT Power Rangers crossover. Because the first one, of course, as we all know, is the infamous Power Rangers in Space Next Mutation crossover. Which, the less the said about that crossover, the better. Okay? <laughs> but no, this is the crossover we all wish we got. Of the original, te uh, the original, um, the original six teenagers with attitude meeting the power, uh, you know, meeting the Ninja Turtles. No Venus, uh, no Venus there. I, I would have preferred Jinka here. Um, the yellow turtle, uh, the the turtle, uh, the turtle with the yellow headband. For those wondering, she's directly from the IDW comics. Uh, she has a yellow headband, just because everyone's like yellow turtle. What the hell are you talking about? She's got a yellow headband, and really cool. I was actually kind of hoping she'd be here, but no. Nope. Anyway, so we're gonna review this. So let's talk. Let's dive right in and talk about this comic. This comic, first off, is is pretty fun. Because this is one of those few crossovers where it's not like, oh, we go to an alternate dimension. No, it's not like that. It actually is like one of those classic crossovers where it's like the turtles are over here and the rangers are over here and they just and the rangers go to New York from Angel Grove. Yeah, it's one of those in where they exist in it's one of those comics where it's in the same universe and they just hang out. Like they just meet. Like they just like they've like they're aware of each other. In fact, the ninja tur the turtles are like they know what a Power Ranger is when they encounter Tommy, right, for the first time. And he's like, oh, crap, that's Power Ranger. Um, so I thought that was pretty fun. Like, we don't get a lot of crossovers like that. It's usually, like, multiverse stuff um, most of the time. It's kind of nice to have a little change of pace and be like, oh, they exist in the same universe and they're aware. Like, the turtles are aware of them while the turtles themselves stay, in the gr uh, stay hidden. So the story is, is that... Um, Tommy has gone missing, and it turns out that Tommy has infiltrated the Foot Clan because he's looking for a friend from foster care, like an old friend who's joined up with them. And to do that, he's pretending to be working for the Shredder. So the tur so when he encounters the Turtles and morphs, uh, the the Power Rangers who've been looking for him find out where he is, teleport to him, and that kicks off everything. So this is a five issue comic. This is exactly the exact pace. Like, it, it is a breeze to get through. It was a very fast breeze, but I mean that in the, in the best way. Like, this feels like a straight-up action movie. Like, this feels like an action movie of something you wanted since you were a kid. Like, like I think the writer, Ryan Parrott, uh, he, he must have done, like, a line of, like, a, a line of coke while writing this comic because he, it goes at a breakneck speed. Um, it's very much feels like a summer action movie, and it's literally like it doesn't try to be deep or meaningful. It's just you wanted to see the Power Rangers meet the Ninja Turtles, two things you probably grew up with as kids and were jilted uh, when you had that awful ass crossover the first time from Saban. So here you go. I really like the um, the dynamics between the turtles and the nin and um, the Power Rangers because in here it's kind of, it's not really the IDW comics turtles it's more like a turtles team that is like its own universe um, same with the Power Rangers although they do mention Dracon they don't we don't see him but we do mention they do there's a brief 
name. There's a brief little nod to Dracon, but this isn't really like in canon with what's going on at Boom Studios, um, Power Ranger comics. Anywho, so like I said, the interactions are really fun, and yes, as you all know, Shredder becomes the Green Ranger, and it's awesome. Uh, and the Ninja Turtles and April O'Neil become Power Rangers. It's literally like we do the thing you you want them to do. Like, Ryan Parrott was like, I am just going to do all the things you would expect in a crossover, but you're ex but you're fun, uh, but you're going to have fun with it. It's kind of like, this very much feels like a crossover you would see um, in the 90s, or like 80s, 90s, or early 2000s, I should sh say, between Marvel and DC, where it's like, they do the things you expect them to do, like, oh, this character gets that person's power, or whatever. But it's fun. Like it's like it knows what it wants to be and goes on its merry way because we get like a turtle Megazord. We get Bebop and Rocksteady as mo giant monsters. We get um, Shredder as the Green Ranger. It literally is like Ryan Parrott was like, yeah, I'm doing this. So also hats off to the artwork by um, Simon DeMilo. Although assistance with the artwork was done by Alessio Sanano. I apologize for that. The colors were done by Walter Bayamante, um, with assistance by Igor Monti. I butchered those names. I am sorry. But yeah, here's here's a perfect example of how good this artwork is. Look at that. Look how good that is. Like this artwork was perfect. And yes, this is this this art this artist apparently works with Power, on the Power Ranger comics before. But to see like this version of the turtles. Like, they're, like, taller and a little more muscular. I like it. I really dig, like, they feel kind of like a fun mixture of the IDW Turtles mixed with the 2012 cartoon, which I was like, I'm in. Um, there's just some really... It's it's very much a by-the-numbers crossover where you, they meet, they fight, they team up, but the character interactions are a lot of fun. It's, I especially love the interactions between Mikey and Zack. I love Mikey and Zack's interactions the most out of all of them. Um, and as well as Billy and Donatello, the, that was a given, but like the, the sleeper real hit was Mikey and Zack of those two hanging out. But yeah, all around, like having Rita meet Zed and I really hope this gets a sequel because it does, it does do the thing where I'm kind of tired of with these crossovers where it's like, oh, we'll leave sequel bait open. It doesn't do this to an annoying level, but it does have that moment of, oh, sequel bait. Um, I wish they would stop doing this because you never know if these crossovers are going to be a hit or not. I know Batman TMNT was a big thing, and I'm hoping this made enough sales to do a second one. Um, but honestly, aside from one little thing, it'd be like, yeah, it's a cool little one-and-done story. So I wish it would stop doing it, um, especially it's very evident in the IDW books where it's very... Um, or they really want to sequel bait everything. I feel like IDW, when they do these crossovers, like, oh, we've got to make more. We've got to make more, because Batman TMNT did so damn well. <laughs> but, yeah. So there's really nothing wrong with this comic. I absolutely love this. I abs this, is, this is a really great crossover. This makes the 10-year-old me squee in delight. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people, a lot of people who read the, these, who read, watch these shows, excuse me, who watched both Team and Team Power Rangers, and again, if you felt ripped off by, you know, in the In Space Next Mutation crossover, this will this is a great apology letter. This is a great apology letter. It is a twenty dollar book, uh, twenty six if you're in Canada. Sorry, Canada. Um, but I, yeah, it's just really good. If you love Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. And you've always wanted to see, like, the crossover you always wanted to see with them. Like, this, when it was announced that Boom was going to be doing Power, uh, Power Ranger comics, one of the first things I said was, they have got to do a Ninja Turtle crossover to make up for that, epi that god-awful episode. Um, and they did. They did with Flying Colors, and it was a very quick read. But it's so good, the action is fluid, the artwork is amazing, everyone's in character, just all around... It's fantastic. It's just it's just great. It's what you've always want. It's what we've always wanted for fans uh, fans of this series. I hope it gets a sequel. But anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below. What did you guys think of Bat of excuse me? I keep trying to say Batman TMNT. What did you guys think of this crossover? Did you guys like it? Hate it? Comment below. 
uh, let me know. And once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.